Hello. Hello. Bonjour. Hi. What you're about to watch is a project we've been working on for over a year, almost two years now. Yeah. Um, it was going to be performed live, and now it's a read-through performance thing. Oh, Thanks, COVID. Really. Hopefully yeah. it, it's still entertaining for you guys to watch. Yeah. We but have an awful lot of fun making what it. What we say, we appreciate you that you're watching this. I also want to extend a thank you to everyone who's been part of AVBM. They've been so patient. Thank We've you. gone through multiple lockdowns trying to do this on Zoom. Everyone <laughs> you're about to watch has put so much work into their characters, their yeah. roles. Yes. So, yeah, well done to our amazing cast. Thank you. Well done, and you. thank you to Alex yeah. Giorgio, who stepped in very last minute to yes, fill the role of Watkins. We, we are very, very proud of all of you. Mm. And you should be proud, and you are cool. Yeah. I mean, this performance will be on Instagram. Like, yes. Uh, live filming and answering your questions and everything like that. So, indelible go over to that company. Get that one. So go over to that as well. Mm. What a nice. sexy web domain. <laughs> Let's mm. stop stalling. Yes. We introduce to you a, a very British, British murder. murder! Hammermeister Manor, 1924. A building that stands alone, towering with flamboyant grace against the landscape of England, legions of forestry surrounding the abode. Every ornate inch still newly polished and shining, home to a man remarked as egotistical by some, fun by others, but eccentric by all. Watkins stands alone, practically motionless. Several glasses and a bottle of wine sit next to him on a small table. Watkins, could you get the door? Watkins moves towards the front door. He begins to open it, but it is thrown open quickly by Professor Robert Rivers. The force throws Watkins off slightly, but he composes himself. Good evening, Watkins. How's life treating you? Impeccably well, Professor. Employment-wise, however, not so much has changed. <laughs> oh, Watkins, you always were such a laugh. Now, where is Sebastian? It's been a donkey's age. The master's pre preparing himself in the bedroom. Hit me with us shortly, I assure you. Well, I've waited six years. I'm sure a few extra minutes won't kill anybody. Watkins! Yes, sir. Watkins walks towards the door and opens it, revealing Florence Burns. She meanders into the space, removing her jacket and throwing it to Watkins, who catches it seamlessly. May I take your coat, Miss? Burns, Florence Burns, editor of the Evening News. Perhaps you've read some of my work? My apologies. My duties leave me with very little free time. That's your loss, I'm afraid. Ah, Miss Burns, I'm a frequent reader of your columns. Professor Rivers, I'm a frequent reader of your books. Ah, how well educated you both are. Indeed. Indeed. Well, I'm glad we could finally meet, face to face. He outstretches a palm for a handshake. Florence's grip is much harder than he'd imagined, and he struggles to keep himself together before she lets go. The feeling's mutual. Watkins peers out of the room. Ah, may I please introduce you? Our host... Mr. Sebastian Hammermeister. Sebastian enters, arms outstretched and ecstatic for the evening's festivities. Florence begins pacing towards him as if to begin conversation. He runs right past her towards Professor Rivers. Robert! Sebastian, old chum. The two of them embrace in a hug and jump around in a little circle before swiftly realizing <clears throat> they're not alone. Composing themselves. <clears throat> anyway, how's your nephew? died in the war. How's your wife? Died of Spanish flu. Oh. That's simply tragic, I'm sorry. That ah, bit's alright. Hardly noticed the difference, if I'm honest with you. She hardly did anything around the house while she was alive. Hmm. <laughs> 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 oh. Ooh, I'll get it, Watkins! Bastian opens the door to reveal Solomon Bates. He rushes in, clearly very excited. He shakes Sebastian's hand quickly and continuously. Mr. Hammermeister, thank you so much for the invite. 
It's a right treat seeing you again, it is. Wonderful to see you again, too. <laughs> Why don't you give Watkins your coat and we'll fix you a drink, hmm? Ah, of course. I've never had any of this schmancy fancy wine before. Solomon approaches Watkins, removing his coat. Welcome, Master. Bates. Solomon Bates. Watkins goes to speak, but simply turns and pours a drink before giving it to Solomon and exiting the room. Rivers approaches Solomon. So, if you don't mind my asking, why are you here? Oh, <laughs> I design houses. I'm an architect, you see. Ah, for the working class? <laughs> no, I designed this very house we're standing in now. Ooh! Mahogany. Solomon is distracted by something wooden in the room and moves towards it. Right. Professor Rivers moves elsewhere to mingle. Watkins re-enters and tends to the door. Edmund Goodwin enters the house. He walks with a cane. Sebastian quickly runs over to him. Oh, good evening! Would you like some help there, my friend? Ah, thank you, Sebastian. I hope you're well. Oh, Miss Burns! Florence <laughs> brings herself over to Sebastian and Edmund. If you're looking for a story, I'm sure this man's full of them. Edmund Goodwin. War hero. Oh, I'd hardly say hero, you flatter me. Oh, but look at yourself! And look at those medals! So shiny. Y yes, thank you, Sebastian. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Burns. Pleasure's all mine. Florence Burns. I don't suppose you'd be willing to do an interview? Let's enjoy the party for now, and we'll see what happens. The two of them smile and part ways to mingle some more. Sebastian brings Edmund a chair and a glass of wine. Edmund sits down, taking the wine, as Sebastian begins to walk away. Oh, oh, Sebastian! Is this wine? Oh, indeed! Uh, apologies. I've always been a fussy drinker. Do you happen to have any port? Ooh, uh, Watkins! Fetch some port for this defender of our freedom! Actually, if we're making requests, do you have anything produced by Chateau Le Tour? Uh, Watkins? I believe we have a bottle. Oh, uh, be a dear and fetch it. Watkins exits the room. Oh, door! I've got this one. Professor Rivers opens the door to reveal Margaret Adler. Professor Rivers moves next to Sebastian as Maggie admires the decor of the house before clocking Sebastian across the room. Bassy! Bassy? Sebastian jokingly knocks the pipe from Rivers' hand. Not a word. Rivers laughs to himself, walking across to get a drink, and in the process getting a brand new pipe from his pocket. <laughs> Maggie! And the two share a hug. Sebastian, the house looks simply divine. However did you pull this off? Oh, I can't take all of the credit. It's the work of Mr. Bates that made the manner the way this is. Yes! From across the room, Solomon raises an arm in acknowledgement. Watkins re-enters with a bottle of port for Edmund and a bottle of Chateau Leteur for Florence, and he pours them both a drink. I've missed you terribly, darling. It feels like years since we last saw each other. I met you two days ago, Margaret. I know. I'm just so excited to be here. Oh, well, why don't you speak to Professor Rivers whilst I prepare? Everybody should have arrived by now. How interesting. Uh, what is here, Professor of, exactly? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> I say, Sebastian. I thought he only sent out five invitations. So did I, Robert. Watkins? Watkins moves towards the door and Madame Christen Christine is revealed standing at the doorstep. She stumbles into the house, only just being able to balance herself. Who on earth are you? Madam Christine, my child, please, I seek shelter. The storm outside is unforgiving. Wait a minute. I recognize you. You're the woman who offered to tell me my future on the street. Good sir, I know you are an unbeliever, but please find it in your heart to seek a woman with no home. Uh, um, Robert, what do you say? 
<clears throat> I'm skeptical, if I'm honest with you. Of all nights, she shows up on the night of your grand reopening, begging for shelter. Right, you also have a brief history with one another. He's right, it seems a little suspicious. Oh, uh, we're all human, aren't we? What's the arm in letting us stay? I don't think you quite understand the circumstances here. Oh, Amma Meister is a very wealthy man. Yeah. We can't just let anyone in here. What harm could she do? <sighs> that is true. Besides, there are three able-bodied men in the room. Rivers gestures to himself, Sebastian, and Solomon. I pretend I'm not offended by that. Uh, hold on. Who's to say I couldn't defend myself? Is it because I'm a woman, Professor? Uh, perhaps you could, but Margaret hardly seems like she could hold her own against... Well, anyone. I think you're starting to talk a little bit out of line. Agreed, for someone so educational, you're starting to talk right out of your... Just throwing it out there. The Professor is probably right. Oh, can't we all just get along? Watkins? Uh, more wine. Uh, what are we doing about her? I don't think it's a very smart I idea. Don't oh, I don't think it's a very smart idea. I don't think that I just leave her be. Couldn't consider that. So where's the party at? Who are you? Calm yourself, Sebastian. You're late. Fashionably late, Eddie. Always fashionably late. <clears throat> Don't call me Eddie. The invite said 5.30, it's 5.45. Edmund? Please explain. This is a friend of mine. Austin Chase, Mr. Hammermeister, a lord straight out of the US of A. Uh, oh, well, howdy, good sir. Yeah, yeah. A anyway, Eddie, thank you invite. Thank you for inviting me along. Uh, you don't mind me being here, do you? Oh well, any friend of Edmund's is a friend of mine. Uh, please grab yourself a drink. Uh, Watkins, more wine. Um, I'm sorry, sir, but we still haven't decided upon the fate of our uninvited guest. <gasps> oh, she, Madam Christine, my child. <laughs> Hang on. What was that? Kristen? Christine? Goodness, yes, Madam Kristen. Christine, you must be psychically connected. Tell me, child, can you see into the great beyond? Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever you say. E Eddie, drinks? Yes, please. I need more port. Yeah. Sebastian clinks his glass and everyone turns to him. <laughs> Friends, Romans, countrymen, greetings and good evening to you all. <sighs> I want to thank you for being here. Renovating and expanding Hammermeister Manor was the proudest and most expensive endeavour of my life. You're too bloody right. <laughs> <laughs> I've known some of you for many, many years. Some of you I met quite literally two days ago. I didn't even invite some of you. Oh, but what does that matter? Let's raise a glass and have a jolly good time. To Sebastian Hammermeister. Everyone raises their glass if they have one and continues mingling. Rivers moves closer to Sebastian. Forgive me, old chap. What exactly is your connection to Edmund? Is he related at all? Uh, he was a best friend of my nephew's since childhood, so he's always been a part of the family. I suppose he's a sort of connection to young Timothy in that case. Since he's gone, I imagine you could see it like that. <laughs> Madam Christine <laughs> moves in closer to Sebastian. Excuse me, child. <laughs> the man is in his thirties. I can't help but overhear that you have lost someone close to you. If you have possessions of theirs, I could contact them. I'm not paying you a penny. Your hospitality is payment enough. No cash required. Oh! Well, why didn't you say so? Sounds spiffing! I'm up for it! 
Uh, what's going on? <laughs> this quack is going to contact Timothy! Everyone, into the dining room! We have a nice big table. Oh, before I miss Rabbit Master, do you mind if I have a quick look around the house, check everything's in order? Of course, take as much time as you need! Solomon yeah. exits the room. <laughs> oh, just quickly, where's your lavatory? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> oh, so many toilets. <laughs> Down the hall, up the stairs, first door on the left. <laughs> Would you like me to show her the way to the laboratory, sir? Oh, splendid idea, Watkins. Uh, do put the bottles back in the cellar once you're done, won't you? Watkins nods towards Sebastian, uh. taking the three bottles, and he and Florence exit the room. The rest of you, let's have a seance! We enter the dining room. A large table sits with several chairs surrounding it. Madame Christine enters, surveying the room. Sebastian, Edmund, Professor Rivers, Maggie and Austin enter and huddle themselves in a far corner, unsure of whether to get too close. Madame Christine turns to the group. We are to use this table. I will need to absorb some of its spiritual energy. She takes a moment before breathing heavily and slamming her upper body onto the table, waving her arms around it maniacally for a few seconds. Anything on the table is thrown off with no second thought. For a short time, she rises and turns calmly once again to the rabble. We may begin. She takes a spot at the table. <coughs> what was that? I think she just channeled the unholy spirit. That that looked like a, that looked like a seizure. Yeah. There are two ways in which we can perform this ritual. The first requires this. <sighs> Put the, the knife. <coughs> Down! The other requires this. Madame Christine puts a crystal ball on the table. She holds out both of her arms, anticipating that the others will join her in holding hands. Sebastian stares at her, confused. She begins to wave her arms slightly, causing Sebastian to copy. The other members of the party copy Sebastian until all of the guests are waving their arms around next to them. If we could all join hands. Everyone joins hands. Madame Christine bows her head. Ghosts, spirits, and inhabitants of the great beyond, I invite you to make yourselves known to us. Probably the American. Hey! <laughs> no interruptions, I must hone in on the spirit world! Madame Christine closes her eyes. I see... a man... great renowned. Do you really? Silence! The name of this man... Is Gatsby! Hold on a moment. Will you please have no interruptions? I need to hone in on the world and please just close your eyes. I see a boy beside him with frail complexion. He is holding a bowl. An empty bowl. He is asking for more. Oh, this is Poppycock. She's not <laughs> scenarios from literature. She's How a charlatan. You... How dare you question my integrity, child? I am twenty-four. <laughs>
What did you do? Oh, he's cursed you, Eddie. The witch! Watkins burn her! This is not my doing. Look, if you didn't cause the scream, then who did? It could very well be Watkins. He's awfully afraid of spiders. Sounded like... Miss Burns. She was wandering the house, possibly alone after Watkins accompanied her. Is the house secure? Well, it, um, secure enough? If someone is broken in here, I swear to God, I Not don't, like, possible! Watkins has, uh, Watkins has, uh, probably locked the door. Probably. Possibly. I'll be honest, I never really told him to, so who knows? Well, what else could it be? Whatever it is, I'm not risking this thing causing any more trouble. Austin grabs the crystal ball and throws it out of the room. <gasps> My fishbowl! Ow! Watch where you're throwing! Lawrence enters the room. Lawrence? Oh, what's the matter? It's Solomon. He's been murdered. Mm. Ah, murder. That's the thing we missed. Wait. Excuse me, what? I was coming back from the lavatory and I saw him on the staircase. His head had been caved in with a hammer. Oh dear. Watkins will not enjoy cleaning this. So much icky, sticky blood all over the mahogany floors. Well, I suggest we find Watkins and stick together until we can discover who's behind this. Well, if it wasn't Florence, then there's only one other person it can be. With all due respect, I would cease this balderdash immediately if I was you, you lordship. I've known Watkins for years. I can assure you that he would never commit first-degree murder. But somebody did. I'd rather like to know who. Oh, Bassie, what do we do now? Uh, let's reconvene in the living room. I'll summon Watkins. I imagine this will be a lengthy evening. I'll remain here. I have a crystal ball to mend, thanks to you. Ah, well, uh, jolly good. Uh, everyone else, I shall lead the way. <laughs> We're back in the living room. Everyone, minus Madam Christine and Watkins, enters. They all take their positions. Edmund is sitting with Austin, Rivers is pacing, and so on. Doubt this is the time for excitement. I just don't believe anyone could carry out such an act. And why? Are there any classists in the room? Everyone looks towards Professor Rivers. Apart from me. Everyone looks towards Sebastian. Don't look at me. I love the poor. I built houses for them. No, Mr. Hammermeister, you've gone on record as saying the working class built houses for you. Even better! Why would I make my life more difficult when I can exploit poor... You know... Oh dear. It's been two minutes and I've already forgotten the man's name. Solomon. Uh, yes, Salami! Solomon. <laughs> Did I stutter, you picture of bravery? So shiny. I think we should be sitting everyone down for a straight-up interrogation. If no one else has noticed, the butler's gone. Dismiss your accusations at once! I won't tolerate such flim-flam within my own abode. Awfully eager to blame Watkins, aren't we? Anything you want to tell us? I'm sure he's just being cautious. Leave him be. Keep yourself out of this. 
The grown-ups are talking. Well, now, now, Margaret has nothing wrong, Professor. <laughs> we don't know that. But what games bring tea? He's not here! There's nobody listening to me! I don't think people are quite comprehending that there's been a serious, real-life murder! The door flies open to reveal Detective Julia Rowe standing in the doorway. Mr. Hammermeister Manor? Indeed it is. How are all these people entering your house? Oh, why will this storm not stop? I hate the weather. Everybody would kindly calm down. Go on then. Who are you? We've already had a psychic. Are you some sort of dreary magician? Ooh, ooh, are you going to pull a rabbit out of a hat? Watkins enters. I called for our new guest, sir. May I present Detective Julia Rowe of Scotland Yard. A detective? <laughs> Impossible. You're a... You've got... You know. You know. You know. Degree in criminology, Professor Rivers. How do you know who we are? It may have escaped you, good sir, that some people in this room publish their work. Miss Burns, your columns are certainly interesting, despite some exaggeration to the facts. What was that? And you, Professor Robert Rivers. Your publications have not escaped me either. However, some of your writings seem... eerily familiar. As if I've read them before. But I must be mistaken. An educated man such as yourself would never dare plagiarise, I'm sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, Sebastian. A game plan? Uh, yes, of course. He stares into the distance with a finger raised, as if about to recite a marvellous plan. There's a bit of a gap as he attempts to think on his feet. Bastion, I, uh... G give him a chance. Watkins realises that Sebastian has no plan. He walks over to Sebastian and lowers the raised finger. Sir. Perhaps it's best that we allow Miss Rowe to uh, take the lead on this. She is a professional. The lowered finger is thrown back into the air quickly, throwing Watkins off balance. A very wise idea, Watkins. Uh, but I was close. I'm sure you were, sir. Thank you very much. Over the course of this evening, I'll be interviewing each of you individually. Finding out where you were at the time of the murder, whether anyone else can support your story, other details of the sort. Are there any objections to my plan of action? Splendid. Mr. Hammermeister, in the unfortunate absence of your architect, could you recommend a room for me to carry out my investigation? I imagine the second study could prove useful to you. And where would I find that? Next to the first study. Down the hall, take the flight of stairs upwards one floor, third floor, third door to your left. Thank you. Detective Roy walks quickly towards the room's exit before turning quickly. Burns, care to go first? Of course. I'd feel safer with you than with any of this lot. The rest of you, bide your time in here. Oh, hold on, if I may. Perhaps it would be a good plan to send Watkins out onto the grounds, check this wasn't the work of some intruder? Yes, I agree with you. Ah, uh, oh, well then, Watkins, if you wouldn't mind. I'll return the moment my search is concluded. Uh, thank you, Watkins. I love you! Watkins stops for a moment before continuing out of the room. Rivers, Edmund and Austin all look at Sebastian with confusion before brushing it off. I suggest you make yourselves comfortable. This will take a while. Still in the living room, music is now being played. Sebastian and Maggie are sitting together. Austin and Edmund are throwing cards into a hat. Rivers is pacing by himself, not far from Sebastian and Maggie. Could we please turn off the music? Would you prefer we die in silence? I praise your optimism, Professor Rivers. Hmm. Let's take a vote. All 
all those who want the music to be gone. I'm merely trying to lighten the mood. Seems as though this evening has gone down the drain. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't gone down the drain at all. It's just been a small chip in things. A man has been murdered. Margaret. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. You were only trying to be positive. Thank you. So, Sebastian, uh, where on earth do you find all the money to fund this renovation? Ah, well, you see, Robert, I had to dip into the legendary Hammermeister fortune. <laughs> you make it sound like some sort of Grecian myth. Oh, it is no myth. But I dare not tell where I keep it locked away. There could be prying ears. <laughs> that sounds rather exciting. What on earth do you do with a fortune that large? Build unnecessarily large houses, apparently. <laughs> uh, and even then, it barely made a dent. I only asked out of curiosity, old friend. Perhaps keep some of the details to yourself. Besides, we were going to deal in a game of cards. You want to join? Hmm. We're not asking you to bet your mythical fortune away. This is just to pass the time. I'm also playing Sebastian. Oh, you, me, and Uncle Sam? Very well. Deal me in. Sebastian approaches where Austin and Edmund are sitting as Rivers approaches Maggie. Oh, you are holding up, Robert. Don't you, Robert, me. <laughs> Professor Rivers? Let me get one thing through that dim brain. Sebastian is not yours. You've known him less than 48 hours. I don't know quite what you're implying, Professor. I have no ill intentions. Then stop gawking at him, throwing yourself on him like some lovesick puppy. With all due respect, he's my friend, Professor. You barely know him. How you've landed yourself here is beyond me, but the Sebastian I know would never mix with the likes of you. The likes of me? Before you go casting aspersions, perhaps ask Sebastian? You know, considering he invited me this evening. You are beneath him. Believe you me, you shan't be around much longer. He'll find better ways to entertain himself than associating with some slapper like you. Oh, the implication being that I somehow prostitute myself. Very original. Try using a slur I haven't heard before, Professor. I describe my lifestyle as flapper, fun-loving, something you could clearly never understand. Sebastian is the kindest man I've ever known, and I am so happy to be here this evening. Sebastian turns from his game of cards and runs to Maggie and Professor Rivers. He embraces them, taking one under each arm. Ah, it's fills me with such happiness to see two of my best friends getting along. <laughs> Lawrence enters. Everyone rises and or turns their attention to her. As Sebastian leaves Rivers and Maggie, Rivers gently pushes Maggie back onto her seat. At ease, everyone. So, what happened? She asked me questions. I answered honestly. Now I'm here. You do know what an interrogation is, correct? Yeah, uh, of course I do. I'm sure we're all searching for something more specific. Can't help you there. I was told not to say anything. Yes, I suppose that makes sense. Saves anyone preparing answers. You are right on the money, Admiral. General, what was your rank? Lieutenant, Miss Burns. I wish I was half the man you were. Oh, Mr. Hammermeister, glad you said something. She wants you next. What? Me? Is there another Mr. Hammermeister in the room? No, no, I understand. It's just... I've done nothing! If I wanted to kill anybody, I'd have done what 
chickens to do it. But I haven't, I haven't done anything. And neither had Watkins. Sebastian tried to calm yourself. Nobody is accusing you or Watkins of anything. This is simply procedure. Well, I'm not going. I shan't say another word. I'll go. Don't trip over those accusations of yours. Maggie playfully indicates to go back to being silent. She and Sebastian sassily watch Austin exit the room. Sebastian instantly rises again. Right. Who's up for a drink from the dining room, hmm? Uh, Detective Rowe asked us all to remain here. If we stick together, I assume it doesn't matter where we are. Hmm. I simply think it's a good idea to stock up on beverages. That is assuming the quack hasn't pilfered my wine cellar. Very well then. I could go for more port if I'm honest. Now oh, there we go. That's the spirit. <laughs> Onward march, everyone. We return to the kitchen. Sebastian, Maggie, Edmund, Florence, and Professor Rivers all enter the room and find the dead body of Madame Christen Christine strangled with her own shawl. Sebastian steps forward and points straight towards a bottle on the table. She was pilfering my wine! I think there's a larger issue at hand here, Sebastian. I can't bear to watch. I may just faint. Maggie goes to fall and Professor Rivers purposefully steps back so that she will hit the ground. Florence is able to catch Maggie before she hits the floor. You're all right, ass. You know that. I would suggest that you align with your place, Miss Burns. My foot is going to align with your place in a minute, Professor. We cannot seriously be doing this again. Edmund, please calm yourself. <laughs> calm myself. Calm yourself. Nobody calm me. Will you pull yourself together? Will you learn to pick your battles? Detective Rowe bursts into the room with Austin. She is visibly annoyed. I cannot focus with you all making this incessant racket. Besides, I asked all of you to stay in the... What happened here? I'm no expert. But I think this woman has been killed. Your sarcasm is not appreciated in this current situation. She walks away from Austin and towards Kristen's body. In fact, everybody moves closer to the body. Rivers moves to examine it and Detective Roy slaps his hand away as he retreats to the rest of the group. That's a tragic demise. She was so young. So poor. Sebastian closes Kristen's eyes and wipes his hand on Robert's jacket in disgust. Julia stands between the body and the group. For future reference, unless you want to increase your charges of, chances of being arrested on a murder charge, do not touch a fresh corpse before it's been examined by me. Ah, uh, sorry. I now have a new body to examine, so I will rejoin with you all shortly. If you could all please wait in the living room and stay there. I'm, uh, I'm getting my case. I need, a, I need a cigar. Fine. Be quick. Austin exits one way as the rest all exit back towards the living room. We're back in the living room. Edmund sits alone, leaning on his cane. Sebastian and Professor Rivers stand alongside each other as Maggie and Florence sit on the couch. Well, look on the bright side. If we're all together and the killer tries to get one of us, we can all, you know, team up on them and then we can tell Detective Rowe who the killer is. Maggie, I love you to bits, but no killer is that stupid. Well, do you forgive me for trying to stay optimistic? This evening has been very difficult for me. It's been difficult for all of us. Robert. Rivers concedes. Austin enters the room with his case in hand, as well as the coat and hat he entered the house with. He stops in front of the group. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm leaving. I'm sorry, excuse the Christ out of me. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> yes, I second that. What do you mean you're leaving? I've, uh, I've had it with this house. I've had it with that uh, gumshoe. I'm done with it all. There have been two murders, and I'm not about to be a third. 
and maybe take a second to calm down. Oh, I am calm as a dandy, sweetheart. I just can't spend one more second trapped like a fish in a barrel. I'm done. So, God save the king. I wonder if he'll save you assholes. Austin goes to leave when his case flies open, spilling expensive silverware, jewellery, etc. all over the floor. So, that's why you were so eager to leave. Oh, do be quiet. So that's why you were so eager to leave. I, uh, clearly picked up the wrong case. Edmund rises hobbles over to Austin and turns the case around to reveal Lord Austin Chase written on the side. Lord Austin Chase. Now, I only know one of those. <laughs> so you've got some explaining to do. Okay, okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't believe you for a second. It was worth a shot. Case or no case, I'm leaving anyway. Austin runs for the front door as Sebastian rises. Somebody stop him! The door flies inward and hits Austin square in the face as Watkins enters the front room. He seems tired. <sighs> Sir, I've inspected the grounds. And there are no signs of forced entry. Which means... Our murderer is in this house. Thank you, Watkins. You've done beautifully. Sir? If you could kindly remove the door from my nose! Watkins panics, realising what he's done. Uh, uh, Lord, Lord Chase, I, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, please forgive me. Don't you apologise, Watkins. He was about to make off with a case full of Sebastian's valuables. Well... Jaws must work differently, Yankee Doodle Dandyland. Don't patronize me. You are in no position to be making demands, thief. Detective Rowe enters, placing gloves in her pocket and generally cleaning herself up after examining Kristen. Why do bad things happen in this group whenever I leave? Explain. Well, Mr. Stars and Stripes over here claimed he was leaving. He got to the door and half of Sebastian's silverware fell out of his case. <laughs> he sprinted to the door before Watkins broke his nose with it. Oh, the killer is someone in this house, just so you know. Then you walked in and here we are. Now, there are two thieves under my roof. In all fairness, Mr. Hammermeister, one of them is a corpse. Well, she won't be the only one if things are returned to exactly where they belong. Mr. Hammermeister. Do you know where everything originally came from? Of course not. No, but he does. Sebastian points to Watkins, turning his gaze towards him. I'll begin right away. No. Watkins, sit down. I've been here many a time. I can put everything back in its place. I can also keep an eye on him. I do apologise for any trouble I've caused by bringing him here. What was that? Nothing of your concern. Austin and Edmund go to exit before being interrupted. Wait! Edmund hasn't been properly interviewed yet. He has no confirmed alibi. Does nobody find it suspicious that he's wandering off with the man who just tried to bail on us all? Professor, with all due respect, Edmund doesn't seem like the most capable man in his current state. And even if he did become struck with a homicidal tendency, Austin could hold his own with relative ease. Um, no offence meant. Oh, no. It's fine. Point made, Margaret. Anyone is welcome to accompany me. Just get the job done quickly, please, Mr Goodwin. Uh, I'll try my best. Austin and Edmund exit the room. Miss Burns, where exactly did you find Mr Bates's body? Um, he was at the bottom of a stairway. Down the corridor, take a left. It was around there somewhere. Difficult to miss. There's a hammer sticking out of his head. Mm. Thank you. Detective Rowe turns and leaves abruptly. Well, that was rather abrupt, wouldn't you say? It's hardly new, Robert. It's almost as if you haven't paid attention to her behaviour at all this evening. <laughs> Ow! Robert! 
We enter a corridor, decorated by a lone bookshelf. Austin and Edmund enter. Edmund is holding the case full of belongings. So, you thought this was enough for the both of us, did you? Or just enough for you to get a plane home so that I could clean up your mess? Edmund hurls the case at Austin, who is barely able to catch it. We need Sebastian to trust the both of us, and you burgling half the house is a poor way to start! I panicked! Our arrangement don't mean squat if we're dead! I thought you were going to catch on and leave with me. This would barely cover a trip out of the country. You know we can't leave until we have what we came for. Well, if the good professor hadn't opened his goddamn yepper, Hammermeister might have straight up told us where he'd hidden it. He may be stupid, but nobody's that stupid. We surely aren't the first people to come looking for this fortune. But if we stick together and stop trying to weasel out of any obstacle, we can be the first to get our hands on it. All right. One question first, though. Is it you? <laughs> Is what me? <laughs> Unlike some people, I would fill my colleague in if I decided to change the plan drastically. Okay, it's past now. You need to let that go. I'm sorry I asked. This thing just has me on edge. That's all. Fine. Are you? Not, not a chance. Anyways, what kind of killer decides to jump ship when the job's only half done? Okay, don't condescend. So, what's our next move? Nobody's trusting you anymore. But the fruitcake in the fez trusts you. We have free passage anywhere, so long as we're together. I'd say, take the obvious rooms first. Studies, bedrooms, attics. Hmm. Okay. I like thinking. But I have a better idea. Uh, of course you do. <laughs> what do you mean, of course I do? It's never my idea. It's always your idea. Oh, and God forbid that there should ever be an our idea. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but the most thought through plan you've had since you arrived here is to abandon me. And oh. that ended up with you being smacked in the face by a door. I said drop it. Oh, forgive me for being slightly frazzled, but if they found out what we're up to, I wouldn't get too far now, would I? You'd be halfway across the globe with some jewellery and a... A boss of silverware. May I remind you that you are addressing the Lord? Oh, you're a Lord because your family granted you land on their estate. Oh, in well, Scotland. Easy now. And if you were a remotely wealthy one, why are you helping me steal this fortune? Okay, Mr. Self Righteous. Keep your voice down! Besides, the only squeaky clean thing about you is those medals. Not that any of them are genuine. Keep in your mind that we both met through cowardice. Hey, I don't like the idea of being killed then, and I still don't like it now. On that, we can agree. I apologize. Thank you. Is there anything you would like to say? <laughs> no, I'm good. This is entirely on you. Hold on a second. After now all... tell me about that amazing plan of yours. Fine. Sebastian is a fool, but his butler isn't. He'll have ensured it isn't hidden in one place, but several. God damn you, napkins. Watkins. Gesundheit. God, yes. So we'll simply have to search the house for the hidden bits of fortune, notes, checks. Check any case you find for hidden compartments or things of a similar fashion. So it's like looking for several needles in a large mahogany haystack. We discussed this in our letters. Drop it with the slang and metaphors. I don't understand you. Nobody understands you. I sent you mail translating everything. Well, I didn't receive it. Oh. Then some poor British bastard's real confused. <sighs> Never mind. Just tone the Americanisms down. Austin looks down the corridor in a panic. <sighs> Sorry about this. What for? Austin takes the cane and knocks Edmund to the ground before placing the cane next to him as Maggie enters the space. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Good gracious, why is Edmund on the floor? Uh, he was having the traumatic flashback. One of those uh, books fell off the shelf. It must have triggered the poor boy. Oh, I don't see any book on the floor. I put it back exactly where I found it. Oh dear, um, what was the book? Uh, war and Peace. Oh, how tragically ironic. Are you alright, Edmund? Fine. Just had a moment is all. I'll be more if than okay. alright with you, 
Oh, yes. Detective Rowe wants us all gathered in the living room urgently. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> Won't be a moment. Just need to compose myself. Oh, of course. See you in a mo. Maggie saunters out of the space. Austin helps Edmund up off the floor. <sighs> nice thinking. Some warning would have been marvellous, but nice thinking nonetheless. Sorry. It was the first thing I thought of. You alright? I've got a stiff upper lip. I'll be fine. You walk on. I'll put the last of these things back where they need to be. <laughs> okay. Here, uh, fill this up if you can. Austin throws a whiskey flask in the air and Edmund catches it. <sighs> really? Hey, you got your crutch. I got mine. The two exit the corridor in opposite directions. We are once again in the living room. Sebastian, Maggie, Professor Rivers, Florence, Edmund and Austin are sat in various places around the room. Detective Rowe is pacing in the centre, waiting to address everyone. Are you sure everything is back where it was? I assure you it is. Did he give you any trouble? I am not a child. Ah, he was impeccably behaved. Mr. Hammermeister, where is your butler? Uh, will you be here shortly? He's bringing wine, port, chatelot, oh, it's not easy to carry all that in two arms. Watkins enters and distributes the drinks to everybody. See, uh, here he is now. And begin. This has been a trying evening for us all. But I believe I have the research and cross-examination I need in order to deduce who our killer is. Mr. Hammermeister. Gasp! You knew everyone who attended this evening, minus Mr. Bates's Mr. Goodwin's plus one. You, beside Mr. Bates, know this house best, so getting rid of him first would have been crucial in ensuring you had the upper hand. Sending Watkins away could be seen as you reducing the number of people around you to catch you in the act. The issue I run into with you, and subsequently Watkins, is that I can't find a single logical motive for either of you to kill our victims. Unlike Professor Rivers. Boulder Dash! When speaking with some of the people in this room, they told me about an exchange you had with Mr. Bates, condescending him for being of a lower class. It seemed impossible that a working class man such as he could have built this illustrious home. We've also seen various examples of your contempt for those who aren't, dare I say it, you. If Solomon were tonight's only victim, I'd have you in high suspicion. But you weren't present at either murder scene, so you, whilst misogynistic, are innocent. <sighs> Having interviewed Lord Chase and compared his testimonies with others, I can confirm that I trust his alibis. And since the only person with him alone was Mr. Goodwin, this rules them both out of the picture. Our dear Margaret has been by Mr. Hammermeister's side for the majority of the evening, and with no offence meant, seems incapable of the planning necessary to carry out these murders. My thoughts exactly. Which leads us to Miss Florence Burns. You what? I've done nothing. I don't want to stand for such accusations either. If you insist. May I? I suppose so. Detective Rowe takes Florence's glass and inspects it. She doesn't break eye contact from it as she speaks. Professor Rivers, will you please restrain Miss Burns? He does. Of course. Why am I doing this? Yeah, I'm a little bloody curious as well. Fingerprints on this glass are the same that were found on the hammer used to kill Mr. Bates and the shawl used to strangle Miss Christine. That, in addition to the fact you were conveniently missing at the time of both murders, all the evidence points to you. In simpler terms, you're nicked. Well, even if it is me, which it's not. Ah, yes, very believable. What makes you so sure of it now? I didn't have the final piece of evidence I needed. I only knew that they were yours because of the traces left on this glass. <gasps> Gasp! Oh, two times. What can keep track of these? You don't think I allowed you all to have a drink because I felt like it, did you? Have you anything to say? I knew I should have worn those bloody gloves. Well, you'll have a lot of time to <coughs> contemplate that. Watkins, if you would please phone Scotland Yard and ask them to send a vehicle with which we can remove Miss Burns from the premises. Of course. Watkins exits the room. If you don't mind my asking, why do this? It's bloody hard being a journalist. Especially when you're... A woman? I've got the strength in me for one more, Rivers. You want to test me? <clears throat> Especially when you're never good enough for your superiors. 
They said if I didn't improve, I'm done. So I figured reporting on a murder at Hammermeister Manor would get me a secure job, some recognition and a raise if I'm lucky. Well, you'll certainly get recognition. I can guarantee that. But you shan't be the one reporting. Watkins re-enters. Oh. May I propose a toast to the capture of this, uh, oh, magazine murderer. Oh, this tabloid terminator. This journalist who has killed people. Cheers! Everyone raises a glass as Florence drops to the floor and starts gasping for breath. Rivers, Sebastian and Edmund all edge forward as Roe leaps into action. Hey Jeeves, you're keeping track of her breaths as well. Case, this is serious. Everybody stand back, don't come any closer. But should I call the doctor? It's too late, she'll be dead before they get here. We can't just stand here and let her die. Florence dies. Detective Roe picks up her glass and sips the small amount left. Instantly spitting it out. Poison. Not possible. You leave. I mean, I can. But last time I tried, everyone kicked up a huge fuss about it. Not you leave. You leaves. And what does the godforsaken leaf have to do with any of this? You leaves obviously come from you trees and bec can become a fast acting poison when dealt with properly. I thought you'd know that, being so educated and all. Oh, this is simply awful. What does it mean? It means there's another killer in this household. Shall I, uh... Tell Scott and not, Yard not to come yet. I still have work to do. Nobody is leaving this house.
Dining room, about five minutes after the death of Florence Burns. Sebastian, Professor Rivers, Maggie, Edmund, Austin and Watkins are crowded around the large table. Sebastian addresses the group, not dissimilar to a tour guide. See, not only is it big, and not only is it nice, but it's also mahogany. <laughs> Sebastian, my dear friend. Nobody I... gives a rat's ass about your goddamn mahogany tables. I can't take this anymore. Would you prefer oak? We have lots and lots of oak tables upstairs. Sir, may I suggest possibly changing the subject of the conversation? Ha. Huh. Yeah, it's a fine idea, Watkins. Uh... Bassy, I'm not entirely sure that this is helping. And what would you know about helping? Tell us exactly what contributions you have made this evening. I beg you all not this again. I can't take any more of this petty squabbling. No, no, she has a point. It's been a solid five minutes since that pencil pusher went cold. And here he is ranting like he's a straight out of some loony bit. 
Making a scene will not help the situation. And I suggest you remember who allowed you access into this abode to begin with, and cease with this slander. Robert, you're becoming hysterical! <laughs> Bastian hugs Professor Rivers quickly and intensely. Rivers <clears throat> is unappreciative. <laughs> Anybody up for a game of charades? Sebastian, I'm not serious by nature, but the fun and games must end. You're coming across as somewhat, well, ignorant. <laughs> ignorant? Maggie! People have been dying around us for hours, and all you've done is make a show of yourself. Yeah. Optimism is one thing, but a blatant lack of, well, empathy is quite another. I can't stand for it anymore. Now you listen here. Oh, quiet. I... You saw Madame Christine's strangled corpse and immediately shunned her for stealing your wine, of which there is an abundance. We're in here gawking at your table mere minutes after Florence was murdered. Now you listen to me, Maggie. But my name is Margaret. All right, Margaret. I've been a gracious host. Have I not protected you, uh, uh, Lord Chase, uh, <laughs> Professor Rivers? You've protected us from nothing. If Detective Rowe hadn't arrived, we'd all be corpses by now. I'll have you know I would fight tooth and nail to protect my friends. Yes, until they die. At which point you go back to being the self-centred, pompous, la di -da aristocrat that you are. These are lies. You couldn't even remember Solomon's name. Can you imagine if anyone had shown that sort of disrespect towards your nephew? You leave Timothy out of this! You are walking on extremely thin ice. And what will you do? You haven't so much as lifted a finger all evening. I'm warning you, Margaret. Margaret, I strongly suggest that... Oh, don't turn away from me, Sebastian Hammermeister. Whether you've known me for two days or for... You would treat me with some respect. Young lady, I wouldn't... I like... said, look at me! Shut up, Margaret! Sebastian exits the room. Watkins hesitates and then hurriedly follows him. Rivers slowly makes his way over to Maggie and helps her to her feet. They make eye contact for a second. There is no hatred, but no pity. Rivers briefly contemplates following Sebastian before exiting in the other direction. A moment. Austin and Edmund exit the room. Roe pulls two chairs away from the table and moves them. She indicates for a now shaken Maggie to take a seat next to her. Sorry. Causing a scene. Sorry I wasn't here sooner. You couldn't have known what was going on, Detective. It is my job to know. I can look after myself, you know. I'm sorry? I don't want you thinking that had you not turned up, I couldn't have handled things. I know. As far as first impressions go, sorry everyone has been Miss Adler, slightly... your thirst for conversation is appreciated, but you must understand that you're still a suspect in a homicide investigation. Oh, of course. I understand. If it's any consolation, I would say the same thing if anyone had tried to start a casual conversation with me this evening. Oh, okay. Maggie keeps looking over to Detective Rowe as if wanting to say something. Rowe is oblivious as she's digging through her notes. So, how many people have you arrested, Detective? Well, Miss Adler, since you asked, 
Strictly professionally speaking, 57 people have been incarcerated under my jurisdiction. Goodness. I imagine we're good, but it's a lot. Detective Rowe nods and goes back to her notes. Maggie returns to staring and wanting to ask one more question. Have you ever solved crimes with MI5, Detective? That information is classified, Miss Adler. Ro, again, goes to her notes. Maggie just can't contain the urge to ask another. Do detectives read the Sherlock Holmes novels? Miss Adler, I do apologise, but I've already spoken to you more than I should have. I can't have a casual conversation with you during the investigation. I'd be happy to talk with you over a cup of tea post-investigation. If you aren't found guilty of murder, that is. Right. I'm obliged to ask whether you would feel comfortable if I were to leave the room and continue my work? Oh, of course. I think I'll stay here for a short while longer. Detective Rowe begins to leave before having a thought and turning towards Maggie. Miss Adler, if you'd rather get some air, I did notice a porch just down the hall there. If you keep walking, you'll see it on the left. Oh, thank you, Detective. I think I will. Maggie smiles and exits one way as Detective Rowe puts her game face on and pursues Sebastian. We are in another corridor, where a slightly different bookshelf stands over Edmund and Austin. Austin is picking several books off of the bookshelf and desperately looking between them. Edmund stands with his back leaning on the bookshelf, looking rather fed up. This is redundant. Why are we doing this? Because, my partner in crime. Oh yes, say it louder. Just to be extra sure that Detective Rowe can hear it. If I was sitting on a large sum of cash, I'd be hiding checks in between the books. I see your base logic, but you've taken down the same book 14 times. War and Peace is a large book. It could be anywhere in there. Next you'll be saying that one of these books will make the whole case rotate, leading to a secret room. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, quick, uh, stop pulling down more books. Austin frantically starts pulling down on the books as if they were levers, excitedly. Ah, <sighs> work with me here. Mm -hmm. Pride and Prejudice. Yep. Sebastian has pride. His, ah. uh, professor friend, uh, has enough prejudice to feed the country, your country, and mine. Coincidence? Hmm. Yes, of course it's a coincidence. You lunatic! Well, which book do you think he's hidden the fortune in? <laughs> well, the Christmas Carol contains Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge is rich, and... No! What am I saying? Forget the books. We need to leave the shelf and look somewhere else. Now, Sebastian has a study and has some locked drawers, but if you go over there, you should be able to find something. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. Because looking in the drawer makes the most sense. Are you taking the logical high ground over a bookshelf? Uh, perhaps I'm wrong. What are you going to do? Tell me I'm wrong? That's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, you're no fun at all. Check a wardrobe, look through closets, pilfer Solomon's body if you have to. Just find a hammer, break into his study, and look through anything locked. And what if there's nothing there? It's still more productive than this buffoonery. Uh, fine. If you run into any of the others, cover for me. Likewise. They both nod to each other as Austin exits the corridor. Edmund checks to make sure he is alone and drops the cane to the floor, shaking out his supposedly inactive leg. Maggie enters, not quite noticing. Oh, Edmund. Fancy running into you again. Edmund panics and leans against the bookshelf, but it's too late. Maggie keeps the smile on her face. Her head moves from the cane to Edmund, to the cane again. So, I'm somewhat confused. <laughs> Maggie, I thought you were with Detective Rowe. I was, and I'll be talking with her again, unless you provide me with an explanation for this. <laughs> okay, sorry. I jumbled up the order of the books on the shelf I read when I'm in stressful situations. Don't try that one with me, Mr. Goodwin. You know what I'm referring to. 
Edmund stands up properly and straightens himself neatly, no longer with the aid of his cane. She looks at him, the gears spinning in her mind. Edmund picks up the cane and leans on it, more for aesthetic now than necessity. What are you and the American up to? Well done, Margaret. The only one to have figured it out. We're after the Hammeister hidden fortune. Satisfied? Absolutely. I'm fetching Detective Rowe. No, 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 wait, wait. What if I could offer you something? <laughs> if you think for one second. That fortune is on of unimaginable worth, even split three ways. Three of us could be millionaires. I have no interest in your burgling exploits. Perhaps if you'd been less careless, you could have walked caneless right out of here. I bet you never really fought in the war either, did you? <laughs> You're not as dim-witted as I initially believed, are you? How did you know Austin was involved? Well, you brought him here as your guest. Anyone could place the two of you together. Besides, you two always slinking off as a pair. Don't think people aren't noticing. You're surprisingly confident for a girl in your position. Anyone else would show signs of fear. What have I to fear from a cowardly liar who has partnered himself, himself with a twit from across the pond? Shut up, Margaret. We're once again in the kitchen. Julia and Professor Rivers are standing around the large mahogany table. Watkins brings over a tray with three teacups and saucers, a teapot, a jug of milk and some sugar. He places the tray on the table, and everyone takes their teacups. Rivers makes his tea and continuously plants heaping teaspoons of sugar into his teacup. I apologise again on uh, Master Hammermeister's behalf. His uh, outbursts unknown their violent nature they tend to be more eccentric or insane Watkins, but it isn't your place to apologize are we closer to finding miss burns killer it's difficult everyone was in the room when she died and everyone at some stage could have been on their own and could have gained access to the chateau at all that was used to poison florence you don't suppose anyone could have a similar motive to like miss burns do you well obviously not so everyone in the house is still a suspect minus three that have been killed yes i'm afraid so um, what have you used on this, uh, Professor? He looks perplexed. The sugar is now extremely potent in Professor Rivers' cup of tea. His head remains focused on the teacup, and it turns to Watkins, and the two of them look back towards the mountain of sugar. Detective Rowe turns her head towards Rivers, placing her hand, placing her chin into her hand and watching him, desperate to see if he'll actually drink this cup of tea. Just before it reaches his mouth, Watkins places his hand on Rivers' shoulders and looks into his eyes. This is entirely your decision. You don't have to drink... Eat. Eat that, Professor Rivers. Thank you, Watkins. Would you like a different sugar-free teacup? Yes, please, Watkins. Watkins takes the sugar-filled teacup and exits the room. What are your views on Mr. Hammermeister's outburst? I have known that man for half my life. Never have I known him to attack anyone, let alone a woman. But, that said, I haven't seen him in years. We've been communicating mainly via letters until this very evening. People can change, Detective Rowe. I'm fully aware that people change. I'm not one of your asinine readers. You have no need to lecture me. <clears throat> You're quite right. My, um, my apologies. 
Austin sprints into the room, breaking the silence. Stress. Let me guess. The British are coming. Maggie's dead. Not possible. Watkins re-enters the room. Please tell me I heard that correctly. I was walking back here to find you guys. Uh, Edmund went looking for Sebastian. And then I saw her head was uh, all bloody uh, and she's dead. Sit down. No, 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 that doesn't make sense. We were right here, right in this room. She wouldn't stop asking questions and then I suggested she get some air. She was still rather stirred up by what had occurred with... Watkins, given that we have all heard his second one smash into oblivion, how about you fetch Professor Rivers his cup of tea? Watkins nods frantically and exits the room. I think we should seriously consider the possibility that Sebastian murdered Matt... Miss Adler. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, that's a very bold assumption to make. Is it? Last time we saw him, he slapped the poor girl square across the face, and less than an hour later, she's dead as a doornail. Ah, uh, yes. A very affectionate and sincere way of putting it, your lordship. Well, still, it seems incredibly far-fetched. Does that mean he killed Florence, too? Why on earth would he do something like that? Whatever the nut job has to do to save his own ass, maybe she found a story that would lock him up with padded walls. Are you calling my oldest friend a lunatic? Oh, are you suggesting that he is completely normal? Are you two quite finished? <sighs> Professor, you haven't seen him before this night for years. Like you said, people change. It's the only lead I have. I've got no choice but to follow up on it. Watkins re-enters the room with a cup of tea on a tray. There you are, Professor. Before this cup reaches Rivers, however, Sebastian storms in, taking the cup and beginning to sip. Oh. <sighs> ah, top man, Watkins. Thank you. Oh, goodness me. Who died? <laughs> Maggie did. Sebastian. Surely not, Robert. You must be rustling my jimmies. Come, <laughs> Meister. I would like to speak with you alone. Please come with me. Certainly not. I wish to remain right here. I own this manor. I shall stay in whatever room I please. I don't want to do this in front of your friends. Oh, do what you like, Detective. Things surely can't get any worse. Sebastian Hammermeister, I'd like to question you on the events surrounding Margaret Adler's murder. Now, you listen here, small, scary woman. No, you listen here. You are now suspected of murder. I am going to go and examine Margaret's body, and if I find you guilty, so help me, I will bring you down. You're serious, aren't you? Detective Rowe exits the room. Do you all think this is true? That I did this. I think you should do as the detective says, and when questioned, answer honestly. We all want this to be over. Yeah. Professor Rivers exits. And you? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Austin runs off after Professor Rivers. I'm not asking this. But as your carer and your friend, please tell me, in all honesty, did you murder that young woman? No. I'm being serious. I, I won't tell anyone. I didn't do this. Alright. Thank you. 
Now, I should probably telephone Scotland Yard. They may be confused by the last message I left for them. Well, what was the message? Well, I picked up the phone, said, don't send anyone, there's been another murder, and then ended the call. Do what you must, Watkins. Watkins exits the room. Sebastian turns to find Detective Rose standing, waiting for him. Come to kick an aristocrat while he's down. down. Couldn't find any blood but hers at the crime scene. She was attacked with a weapon. <sighs> that doesn't erase my suspicion of you at all. I will not stand here as you allow bastardy with false accusations. Suppose I say... You could have murdered Maggie. I would pick your next words carefully. You can prowl around anywhere in the house with no questions asked. My house, might I add. Your attitude towards my guest has been sour to say the least. And with so little of us less, how have you not discovered who the real killer is? Some detective you are! She was the only person here to treat me with an ounce of decency. Something you are incapable of. Detective Rowe turns and exits hurriedly out of the room. Something I'm incapable of. My manor with my guests and my butler, but instead not one, but two people decide to begin axing them all off. And that's not my fault, no, it's not my fault, except it is my fault because nobody believes me. It had to be straight after I lashed out at the only person who I truly cared about. Why do I feel so alone? Watkins? We are now near the entrance to a cellar. Austin is generally inspecting every nook and cranny to find the fortune, failing in doing so. Edmund enters, not too with it. Ah, <sighs> okay, I've been doing some digging, and I found this base at- What's happened to you? You look like you just left no man's land. Ah, <laughs> like you would know. <clears throat> Touché. Fine. <I'm> just... <clears throat> As you were saying... Right, uh, I found this uh, basement. I thought if we both. <laughs> you reek a port, you know that? Yes. And what about it? How much have you had? Enough! I've had. enough, Austin. <laughs> Alright. So, we head down there and check it out. I mean, if you'd searched the uh, house a bit better, we'd have known about this a long time ago, but it's fine. Uh, anyway, we just go uh, down- I'm sorry. What was that you just said? Well, I'm just saying, the fact that it's taken, this is, taken us this long is entirely your fault. But honestly, it's okay. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> My fault. I'm afraid I'll have to disagree with you there, old friend. Hey, of course, do whatever you need to do. Right, you listen to me. Who pitched this plan to you in the first place? Who got you into this house? Who has kept our uh, teeny tiny little secrets safe this entire time? Been keeping this That's secret. right, me. So, before you go casting aspersions, maybe you should thank me, not blame me. Well, God save the king, I am so sorry. That God, if you Americans had any brains, you'd be dangerous. Okay, I think we just need to calm ourselves. <laughs> Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's settle this. 
like men. Edmund drops the cane and runs to a nearby bookshelf, attempting to pull it down on top of Austin. He cannot. Austin looks in disbelief at the fallen cane. Eddie? Your leg? It's healed! Oh my god! Hold on! I, I got it! You lying little bastard! Oh, funnily enough, this is the second time this has happened this evening. Austin lunges at Edmund and a fight breaks out. After a while, they continue. What has got into you? Oh, this is how it's going to be! I'm least learning a lesson from you and taking that fortune for myself! Way to be petty, Eddie. <laughs> it's nothing personal. Getting rid of people just appears to be very easy in this household. You killed Maggie. And Florence, but why Maggie? This is not a talking moment. But you lied to me. I started murdering people after you asked me, so technically I, I wasn't lying. What kind of logic is that? Okay, well, mm, you know, that whiskey flask you've been drinking from... Yeah? Yeah, I pissed in it! That means I've been drinking. Oh, yes, Austin! Pisky! Oh, I know it tasted British. Austin falls down the stairs and into the nearby basement. He hits every stair as he falls. Edmund, having an idea, grabs a nearby whiskey barrel and pushes it after him. We hear it fall down every stair. Well, I guess I still got time to get out of this. <laughs> Looks like something Picasso would paint down there. Well, I guess some people can't handle their piss whisk. I'll try that again. <laughs> well, I guess some people can't handle that. Oh, why am I talking to you? You're a puddle. We're back in the room where Sebastian's dead body now lies with half a bottle of port sticking out of his spine. Detective Rowan Watkins can be heard conversing in the corridor, their voices growing louder. As much as I appreciate you telephoning Scotland Yard, you can't leave him alone whilst he's a primary suspect in a murder case. Well, last time I spoke to him, it was right through here. The two enter the room and come face to face with the body. Rowan is shocked but silent as Watkins drops his tray. Bruh. Robert! Detective Rowe crouches next to Sebastian as Professor Rivers enters the room. Watkins, I went through a lot of trouble for the title of Professor, so if you could please... How did this happen? Um, um, Rob, Professor, I, I need you to... I need you to do something for me. I hardly think this is the time. No, 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 please, listen. Watkins removes a scrap of paper from his jacket, handing it to Professor Rivers. In the master's bedroom, there's an ornate mahogany bulk shelf. Pull the books down, and behind it, there's a safe. This is, a, this is the combination. Can you bring me the envelope within the safe? Thank you. Rivers takes the scrap of paper, hesitantly and somewhat baffled, before exiting. Watkins. Help me examine him. I know that he was struck on the back of the head, but that obviously isn't what killed him. The forced trauma caused him to fall forwards, and the attacker finished him off afterwards. I'm presuming he didn't see the killer then. You presume correctly. It looks like as if it wasn't done carefully either. Elaborate. Well, I would imagine that one would have quickly impaled the bottle into his head and be done with it. This person wasn't thinking straight. This makes you wonder where the port went before the bottle was used to kill Sebastian. Port? Yes, port. There's a torn label on the side of the bottle. What's the matter? I've only served one person port this entire evening. Edmund enters, cane in hand and hobbling, keeping up his facade. I do apologise for disappearing. I had to put Austin to rest. Looks like someone couldn't handle their whiskey. Oh my god, what on earth happened here? Watkins stands sharply as Rivers once again enters the room. Professor, would you please restrain Mr. Goodwin? 
Before even thinking, Rivers takes the cane and uses it to restrain Edmund. I'm confused. Why am I doing this? I think we've just caught our killer. <laughs> and he is deeply, truly sorry. Rivers tightens his grip. Who exactly did you kill? I was the only person in the cesspit of idiots to deduce that Florence was killing people off. So I poisoned the Chateau Latour when you let me put back Sebastian's belongings. It's a shame I could only grab enough leaves to poison one of you. It would have made the rest of this evening so much easier for me. After you so helpfully sent Margaret my way, she found out something I didn't want her to. So she had to go as well. I knew it was a matter of time before people caught my scent, so I began with Sebastian and hoped to get rid of you all. Did I leave anything out, Detective? What were you and the American up to? Wouldn't believe it, but that's exactly what Maggie asked before she died. Ro nods to Professor Rivers, who then tightens his grip again. Don't bother with him. Our arrangement fell through. He's a puddle of alcohol and arteries in the basement. Have fun cleaning that up, butler. Hold on. What arrangement? After the Hammermeister fortune, you underling. I suppose you tore up the rugs to find a trapdoor? No. We were looking through books. For what? A secret passageway? Or the record that was Austin's idea. What a complete idiot. And so was your friend. How dare you? Go on! Where was it then? In a bank, you doll! I hadn't thought of that. Honestly, he is eccentric, my master, but he is not. An idiot. You mean was not. Rivers tightens his grip harder than before. That matter dealt with. Have you anything else to declare? Uh ever fought in the war? <laughs> Rivers throws Edmund out of his grip and towards the floor as Detective Rowe leans in. I can't believe I never saw how disgusting you are. A terrible lapse in judgment on your part, really. Rowe pulls him up by the scruff of the neck and knees Edmund in the crotch. Oh. Underway, I have evidence to collect. Professor, if you could supervise that until I return. I'll telephone Scotland Yard and tell them they can send some officers over to assist. Detective Rowe begins to make her way out of the room. Thank you. <laughs> Detective Rowe leaves. You know, I got this close once. I can get this close again. I mean, if I can fool you all into calling me a veteran, surely I can get it to a bank account. Oh, and thank you for telling me exactly where the fortune is. I have the power of lawyers. They all sort me out a minimal sentence. Let's see this detective go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me in court. We'll see who wins. You haven't seen the last of- Watkins takes the cane and hits Edmund in the head, knocking him out. <sighs> Just shut up, Edmund. Professor... Shall we escort our friend here outside? I've got this, Watkins. Rivers throws Edmund over his shoulder and begins walking out of the front door, smacking Edmund's head on the frame. Ah. Rivers turns again, smacking Edmund's head once more. He hands Watkins an envelope. I almost forgot. Ah. Thank you. So, what will you do now? I will get a healthy hours of sleep and then I think I'll go lay some flowers on the grave of my darling wife Rivers takes a deep breath and turns once more smacking Edmund's head one final time they both depart through the front door Watkins sits opens the envelope and examines its contents <clears throat> Here recites the last will and testament of Sebastian Helga Rutherford Hammermeister. Me! I'm not the first to admit that I do not have many friends. And over time, my family have become lost to me. I've tried searching for them. Really, I have, but perhaps I misface that they did not want to be found after all. 
The one constant in my life is hopefully the man reading this will right now. If it's not you, put it back. This isn't meant for you. If it is you, by all means, read on. With the loss of young Timothy, the closest thing I have to family now is you, Watkins. The fortune, the manor, the estate, my fez, if you can find it. Even that nice, big, mahogany table. It's all yours, friend. Friendo, buddy, you get the gist. I don't want to get sentimental, but I do wish to thank you for all you've done for me. Even down to keeping that confounded safe combination in your breast pockets for 15 years. I don't know how you did it. But I'm proud of you. I'm proud to have been your friend. I'm not sure what else to say. It's all yours. Have a party. Make it the greatest social event of the decade. I'll, I'll be, be there. there. In, In spirit. spirit. Literally. Yeah. Best of luck. Oh. And Watkins. I love you. Show!